Hello and welcome to Projects, Topics, and Electronics. In today's video I'm going to show some segments I captured during the development process of the DIY transmitter build. So I'm about a week into the DIY transmitter build. I've gotten some of the electronics hooked up. Built a plane previously. I uh, did that quite a long time ago. I like to uh, I like to build these planes from flight test. Their free plans are awesome. I also support them by purchasing some of their products online. Um, the coat or the wiring for my final unit will be much better than this. But like I said, this is just the this is actually going to be my first run with my code and everything, you know, kind of in place. So just to explain a little bit about the circuit here and also on this one, I'm going to probably be much better about uh, supplying information and stuff than I was on the uh, do-it-yourself NRF24 board. But basically how this works is I have a LiPo that I'm using to power everything, just as you normally would in a RC plane. Uh, I've got an ESC here, and how these actually work in the industry applications is the ESC has a BEC on it or a battery eliminator circuit. So actually when you plug in your receiver, the power is coming from the battery eliminator circuit on your ESC and that's what's powering everything. So I have the five volts there. I just quick soldered up a kind of a breakout header pin here. So I'm powering the servos directly from the BEC and then my servo signals to control the servos are coming from the Arduino and then of course I have the NRF chip on there, or the NRF board hooked up to the Arduino as well to receive the signals. So let's give this a first try here and hopefully something works at least. So, plug in the light bulb. Okay, well there's movement, so that's good. Got my controller here, and that's powered up. Let's go right. Let's go left. Okay, well right away the directions are a little bit messed up, so I'll have to go back from the code and figure that out, but hey, you know what, it wouldn't be engineering if everything worked on the first try. Um, I'm also seeing one other issue here. Okay, so yeah, if I try and toggle this really fast, it stops responding. So my guess is that this BEC on here is not beefy enough to provide current for both these 9 gram turbos. So I think it's probably pulling the supply rail down and I'm losing functionality. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'll have to see. Oh, does it say right on here actually? Yeah, I'll have to try and look up the specs for that. But anyways, I'm going to have to get new electronics anyways because this is a bigger setup than what I've normally run. So I'm going to have a bigger motor on here and a bigger B or bigger ESC and bigger battery, bigger everything. So I'm um, thinking the new ESC will be able to handle both these 9 gram servos no problem. So um, other than that. Okay, so when I installed these servos, I actually did, I centered them with an actual servo center. And I see right now that they are not very centered. So what that tells me is that my PWM signal that I'm sending out is not actually the center for these servos. It's a little bit off. So I'll have to fix that up. But I've got a few things to tweak in the code. But overall, for a first trial run, not too bad. So after some time of troubleshooting, I've gotten it yeah, pretty well working. Figured out a lot of the bugs. The code got to be pretty extensive, so I just created a library to make things a little bit cleaner. However, through my troubleshooting efforts, I've realized two problems. Uh, the biggest problem being this joystick. Now, it seems like it'd be a great idea to... Uh, you know, use a you know Xbox joystick or a PS2 joystick. However, right now the way I have it, it takes so little motion to move that toggle switch and to get the full range of the servos. And you know that's that's why transmitters have a very long joystick so that you have a lot of movement in there and you can get some more precise control. So. Uh, that's one thing 
that, that's actually going to probably be the biggest problem I run into when I actually try to fly it is that that joystick is going to be very very sensitive I have some expo functions as well but I don't know how much it'll help for that the second problem being that I do not have near enough resolution in the PWM output of the Arduino so the Arduino output pins for PWM are automatically tied to 8-bit timers which uh, when I figured out the signal that, you know, an, actually f an actual factory RC receiver will send to the servos, it's a uh, very narrow PWM duty cycle. And in order to recreate that on the Arduino, it's not a whole lot of resolution in the bits. And by the time I run a function to set my upper and lower thresholds for the servo travel, I, I only have a very few bits of resolution there. So... I think I'm going to have to take a few steps back and figure out how I get more resolution on the PWM frequency. But anyways, it is the project's moving along. All right, so I've made some changes to the code, and things are now operating much more smoothly. Um, I have a lot more resolution uh, in translation from the joystick to the Elevons. So just to explain here what I did, um, by default, the UNO's output pins that are PW, PWM capable are tied to 8-bit timers. So what that means is in order to get a duty cycle from 0 to 100%, you write a value 0 to 255 in your analog write. And by the time you factor in what it takes to get the full servo travel, which was you know, using the 8-bit timers was something like 12 to 35, it's not a whole lot of resolution, especially then also when you, uh, I have a function that allows me to set the upper and lower limits for travel on these, especially when you start doing functions like that, uh, it becomes really bad because then you're narrowing your full range down to just three or four bits. Uh, so that just wasn't going to work very well at all. So what I did was I did a little bit of research and figured out that the 9 and 10 pins on the Uno can be tied to 16-bit timers. And that gets you a lot more resolution. So now instead of my servo travel being between values 12 and 35, now it's between about 2700 to I think 7200. Uh, so a lot more resolution. I think it's going to help me a lot with my functions. And the joystick travel feels much smoother. So And actually it didn't take very long to modify the code to incorporate this. Um, I used a library pwm.h. I'll probably have a link in the description below. Um, just by using that library, it didn't take very long, but really it's just a matter of setting some of the pins in the AT Mega Chip, uh, which is a little bit more of an advanced process. But oh, that is the nice thing about Arduino. There are a lot of support libraries to do what you want to do and you know let someone else take some of the uh, uh, grunt work out of it for you so you can do what you want to do a little bit faster. There's been a lot of people who have paved the way with some of those libraries to make things easier for everyone else. Um, so now really the only other thing that's changed is before now I was sending three bytes or three byte payloads over to the receiver, one, one byte per servo and then uh, one for the throttle. Now it's going to be two bytes per servo and two for the throttle as well. So uh, this project's moving along pretty good now, just probably another few days cleaning up the code, cleaning up some stuff, uh, and then ready to uh, get things mounted in here in a more fixed manner and maybe think about getting it up in the air. So that concludes the development video for the DIY transmitter build. I want to thank you for watching Projects, Topics, and Electronics today, and I'll see you in the next video.